Good day everybody, this is Chris with The Ancient Scholar. I hope this video finds you all doing well. In today's video, I'd like to discuss a relatively new pattern of ECG changes that appears to be associated with uh, a total occlusion of a coronary artery or severe multivessel coronary artery disease. And this is something known as us longer's pattern. And uh, this uh, came after a paper that was published um, by the I believe the Turkish um, doctor, um, Dr. Oslonger, in 2020. So this is fairly contemporary. This is a paper that was published in 2020. And essentially what they did is they looked at a thousand patients that were diagnosed as having an in STEMI. and compared them to a thousand patients diagnosed with STEMI. Approximately a thousand in each group. Uh, the total total size of both the STEMI and NSTEMI groups uh, was a little over 2,000 patients, but approximately a thousand and a thousand. And uh, what, what was noticed was a pattern, um, and I'll go ahead and describe that pattern, of three primary findings that was seen in the in STEMI, quote unquote, in STEMI group. And they found that in about 6.3% of patients within this in STEMI group presented with a unique pattern of findings. And this pattern included the following, ST elevation in lead three ST depression in leads V4 through V6 with a positive terminal T wave. That is to say that the, the end of the T wave went above the baseline of the ECG, did not stay below. So that is the specific kind of depression that was seen. And then the third finding was subtle, typically, from what I can tell, subtle ST elevation in V1 that exceeds any of the ST segment changes that would be seen in V2. So these are the three primary findings. And these were seen about 6.3% of the time in patients with NSTEMI. So then what they did is they took a look at these 6.3, these patients in this group here, and they had cardiologists look at the uh, morbidity and mortality of these patients and the angiogram findings in the patients that ended up going to the cath lab. And they found that for the most part, the people in this group that had these findings ended up having OMI, or what we would call OMI, uh, occlusion, complete total occlusion of a coronary artery without sufficient uh, collateral circulation. And the morbidity and mortality in these patients, the M&M, &M, uh, uh, in the hospital course, and I think they looked up to a year or so out, um, was similar to the morbidity and mortality seen in the STEMI group. So this is a finding that suggests severe occlusive, occlusive acute occlusive di disease, okay? Um, an OMI, really. So this might be a new pattern, a pattern that suggests OMI, and maybe this is something that should be added on to what we already consider OMI. Um, I will say that this is just one study. Um, I do not think additional large studies have been done to uh, verify or reproduce these findings. Um, so certainly I think that it would be helpful to do additional research on this uh, pattern, but it does seem fairly, uh, fair, it seems like a fairly potent study. I will say that in about half a percent, about 0.5% of patients that present with this Oslonger pattern, about a half a percent um, do not have an acute MI. 
So about a half a percent of people that present with the Oslongers pattern are not actually having an acute myocardial infarction, and it seems that it is more related to chronic underlying cardiovascular pathology and not an acute occlusion of a coronary artery per se. So that is also something that is worth thinking about. Um, so again, I think that this really does warrant additional research, additional studies. Okay, so let's take a look at the Oslonger pattern and uh, let's just go ahead and take a look at an ECG of this pattern. So here we have an ECG. So again, the major findings are going to include ST elevation in lead three, ST depression in leads uh, V4 through V6 with a positive terminal T wave, and then subtle ST elevation in V1 that exceeds what is seen in V2. Let me just make this a little smaller here. So let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, ECG. All right, so let's take a look at lead three here. And you can clearly see that there is some ST elevation in lead three. It's a little subtle, but it's there. And I do not see any other ST elevation in the inferior lead. So lead two um, looks okay. There might be a little bit of depression there. And the other major inferior lead, AVF, looks roughly normal, the J point at least. So only three. So three is the only inferior lead where we see the ST elevation. All right, so check. ST elevation is present in lead three and lead three only. Uh, let's go ahead and look for the presence of ST depression, and maybe I'll do that in red, uh, in leads V4 through V6. So V4, V5, V6. And you can see the J point, the ST segment, is below the baseline in these three. So there is ST depression, but the T wave, the terminal end, or the end of the T wave, is above the baseline. So the J point is below, but the terminal aspect, or the end of the T wave, is above. So that second criterion is met. And then, let's do this in green, let's look at uh, V1. And you can see some subtle ST elevation in V1, and I see no ST elevation in V2. So we have ST elevation present in V1. It's subtle, and it, of course, exceeds the non-existent ST elevation seen in V2. So the three primary diagnostic aspects or components of the Oslongers pattern have been met when appreciating this ECG. There are also some other things of note that I want to point out. You can see ST depression in lead one here. And some ST depression in AVL. And these, of course, are reciprocal to the inferior leads. So we would actually expect that if we're thinking about an inferior STEMI. And that's, in fact, what in many cases the Oslonger pattern suggests is an inferior STEMI. But this is an inferior STEMI, or rather an inferior OMI, or a STEMI equivalent, right? Um, but in the, the traditional case of an inferior STEMI, we would see contiguous ST elevation, right, in 2, 3, and AVF. But here, we're only going to see it in three, and it can be subtle, and it may not meet STEMI criteria, but perhaps we should consider this an OMI, all right? Um, and so you have these reciprocal changes, and then if you look at AVR, there may be elevation in AVR. And if there is elevation in AVR in the setting of the Oslonger's pattern, that suggests that you have subendocardial ischemia. 
So uh, that, that paired with this depression that you see in V4, V5, and V6, so ST elevation in um, AVR, paired with the ST depression that we see in V4 through V6, suggests subendocardial ischemia, where you have ischemia that is um, impacting other areas of the heart. And this is actually interesting in that when we see this, this actually suggests more severe coronary artery disease is present in addition to the underlying OMI. And um, this suggests the presence of something called triple vessel disease, where you're having an OMI of the right coronary artery that is causing the elevation in three and the depression in one in AVL. Um, so you're having an occlusion, acute occlusion of the right coronary artery, but you have severe disease, maybe not an acute occlusion, but you have a serious athero and arterial sclerotic pathophysiology of the left coronary artery and that is resulting in ischemic changes uh, occurring in these other leads, the elevation in AVR and the depression that we see in V4 through V6. So this is a potentially, not only are we dealing with an OMI, but we are potentially dealing with concerning pathology involving impacting the left coronary artery, and this may be proximal pathology that is causing ischemia to both the LAD and the circumflex arteries. Um, and uh, that may warrant uh, more aggressive therapy in addition to medical management. So perhaps placing a stent in the uh, proximal left coronary artery to deal with that pathology. So there's actually quite a bit to be claimed from the Oslonger pattern, particularly it, when you see that elevation in AVR. So let's talk a little bit about why or, or kind of how we can see this pattern because classically when we think of an inferior wall STEMI or uh, OMI, we're thinking of ST elevation in contiguous lead groups 2, 3, and augmented vector foot or AVF, right? Um, not isolated and often subtle ST elevation in lead three. So what's going on here? Well, let's take a look at this. So here's a drawing that I've uh, shamelessly borrowed and I will reference, I will, I will reference my references here in just a little bit. Um, so when we look at kind of the typical myocardial infarction that involves the inferior wall, Typically, what you're going to see is you're going to see the right coronary artery occluded and you're going to have changes that are going to impact this area of the heart, right? The right atrium, uh, a big portion of the right ventricle. And so your ST changes are going to localize in this direction, right? And so this is where you get AVF, right? Right here, you get th three right? And you can even get lead 2, 2-3 two, AVF, more localized in this direction. Um, so what happens in Oslonger's pattern, or Oslonger's, um, I'm not exactly sure how to announce it, I'm just going to say Oslonger's to, to remain consistent. Um, you have occlusion of the coronary artery, but instead of the entire, in, the entire inferior wall, what you get is you get ECG localization to this area here, okay? And so what happens is the, low, the, the ST elevation, the injury that you see, all right, is going to be more here and it is going to be isolated more or less to lead three as opposed to two, three and AVF, all right? So that's kind of what we're seeing. And then if you remember, right, the high lateral wall is reciprocal to the inferior wall. And so you're having a part of the inferior wall 
that is impacted, and so you typically are going to still see that ST depression in leads one and AVL, right? Because this is the hilateral wall, which is reciprocal to the inferior wall, right? So it's still fairly common to see the ST elevation here in lead three, and then reciprocal ST depression in one and AVL, right? Um, and remember, reciprocal changes, even in the presence of subtle ST elevation, are very powerful indicators of an occlusive myocardial infarction. Now, on top of that, in a lot of these cases, we're going to see pathology involving the left coronary artery. Maybe not an acute occlusion, but you're going to have some ischemia that's going to impact the left side of the heart, right? And so you get subendocardial ischemia, and that subendocardial ischemia will often present with elevation, ST elevation in AVR, because AVR is, um, doesn't necessarily look at any specific wall of the heart, but you can still get some elevation in AVR when you have this generalized ischemia that is impacting the heart, particularly the left side. And because the left side is ischemic, you will often get ST depression in the leads that look more toward the, the left ventricle, um, specifically the left ventricle and the side of the left ventricle um, a, a, a little bit, um, the low, what we call the low lateral wall. And this is where you get that ST depression in leads V4 through V6, right? And so this kind of helps, or hopefully should help, explain the Oslinger's pattern and um, why we see that. All right, so I think that's all I want to focus on. Uh, let me go ahead and justify uh, the references that I used. Um, so I referenced the uh, Life in the Fast Lane article on Oslinger's pattern and some of the diagrams and ECGs I have shamelessly taken from that. Um, so I do want to reference that. Uh, here is a link to the article that was published in 2020 by Dr. Oslingers and all. And then this is a link to a, another article that, uh, like, like the Life in the Fast Lane um, article, um, reviews this, and this has some diagrams and some ex further explanation of the Oslinger pattern that I thought was really good. Um, and these articles also reference um, a case study that was put out by Dr. Smith on his ECG blog. Um, and that specific case study is referenced in this link here. All right, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully it made some sense. And perhaps this is an important emerging pattern that we need to pay attention to. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you in the next video.